But we'll now switch to talking about decomposition in the context of polynomials. Now, polynomials are very different from geometric vectors, which we have been discussing until now. In fact, geometric vectors and polynomials are as different as two kinds of vectors can be. Yet the concept of decomposition applies equally well to polynomials as it does to geometric vectors, as it does to all other kinds of vectors for that matter. Furthermore, the very task of decomposition remains exactly the same. It is to determine the unknown coefficients in a linear combination that expresses some given vector with respect to a given set of vectors. So once again, the task is exactly the same as it was in the case of geometric vectors. Yet accomplishing this task will feel totally different. Why? Well, that's because the objects we're working with are totally different. Before, when working with geometric vectors, we had to rely on our geometric imagination and intuition to find the unknown coefficients. Now we're working with functions. So we will have to use the analytical part of our brain to solve these problems. And that's part of what makes linear algebra so much fun. It provides a common framework for analyzing very diverse kinds of things. All right, well now let's switch to the task at hand. And as far as decomposition problems go, these two problems will be very simple. What makes them so simple? Well, of course, it's the choice of these polynomials. In the next video, we'll use more complicated polynomials, which will make the task of decomposition a little bit more difficult. And it will even raise the question of what if the set of polynomials with respect to which you have to perform the decomposition is so complicated that you can do it simply by looking at the problem? Well, that's a question for later. For now, this question doesn't even come up because this task will be particularly simple. So I encourage you to pause the video right now, determine these coefficients on your own, and then come back and check with us. Well, here's how it goes in this case. To decompose this polynomial, x squared plus 7x plus 5, we clearly have to take 1 of p1, because that's the only place where x squared can come from. And to match this coefficient of 1, we need precisely 1 of p of 1. So I'm writing a 1 here. And the first coefficient has been determined. Now, because we're solving a decomposition problem, I'm making this one explicit. Otherwise, I would simply write p1 plus and then a certain proportion of p2. But we're making it explicit, so this 1 stays. Now, we're dealing with 7x. And the only place where x can come from is this polynomial right here, p2. And how much of p2 do we need to take? Well, naturally, to match the coefficient of 7, we have to take 7 thirds of p2. So the second coefficient has been determined, 7 thirds. Finally, how much of p3 do we need to take to complete this task? And of course, the answer is 5. And the first decomposition problem has been solved, and it's almost as simple as working with an orthogonal set of geometric vectors. Some things are very similar, some things are completely different. Let's move on to the second task, which is very similar. Once again, well, let's see. So to match x squared, we need to take precisely 1 of p1. I think I made them a little bit too similar, but that's okay. To match the x term, we need to take negative 7 thirds of p2. So maybe I'll replace this plus with a minus, negative 7 thirds, a neater way to do it. And finally, since there is no free term in this quadratic polynomial, we don't need any of p3. So 0 of p3. And in any other context, I would simply skip writing this term because we don't have any of it. But because we're focused on these coefficients, I've made them explicit in all the cases. So there we go. We have just solved our first two problems of decomposition with respect to polynomials. And the key here was not so much determining the numbers. 
which was a very easy task, but to simply appreciate the fact that decomposition applies equally well to polynomials as it does to geometric vectors, and in many ways actually works very similarly. So in the next video, we will choose a more complicated set of polynomials, and we'll have to solve slightly more difficult decomposition problems, and that will raise a series of very interesting questions.